Welcome to the Thorny Bush Private Nature Reserve. Welcome to our Wild Earth presentation this morning. This is a very beautiful morning. It's lovely. I know the sunrise, this pre sunset sunrise colours are quite amazing. There's some cloud up in the sky that's starting to change colour. <coughs> and you know what they say about a red sky in the morning? Well, that's a ranger's warning. But, I don't know. We are getting closer to full moon, so maybe there will be a bit of weather. We've just had some leopard tracks coming out of camp. The marula tree that we can see in the distance where the sun is going to be rising. There's some leopard tracks coming up from the river. The leopard that Brian saw briefly last night. And I can actually hear some birds shouting. So I know, at the moment I've been driving around looking for where those tracks are headed and I can't find anything yet. So we're going to start by doing that this morning. Brian is on camera. Laszlo is in final control. And, well, in case you don't know, my name is Mark. And, well, I guess it's time to, to see. Unfortunately, several vehicles have already driven this road this morning. Not only me going down and up again, but another vehicle going down and up again. So... Oh. Okay. Yeah, copy that. Um, you need to put the sound up on the laptop. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. So, let us see. Brian, camera. Me here. Word is that they've already found the black dam pride of lion and I'm going to just try to figure out where they are but they found them already rubber frog road Know where that would be. Never even heard of that road yet. Rubber tree. I mean, rubber frog tree. Rubber frog road. No idea where it is, but it's it's nowhere we we can get to. The, they killed a zebra two days ago, and last night sounds like they killed a giraffe. And well. At least <coughs> what we've done today is instead of us going out of signal range, although today was one of the days we could have because there aren't any vehicles driving around. So of all the days that we could have gone filming it, we don't have to do it today because Becky's gone to do it. Oh, wonderful twist of fate. Oh, I could just... Oh! So what I'm trying to look for now is just an odd toe or something that hasn't been ridden over by a car. I mean, track, not actual toe. Um, came out of that little road that runs below our camp. She headed this way, but I think maybe she crossed the road completely.
try to camp a little bit to the south, maybe we'll find something there. <coughs> Vehicles on line up for those lines. Day hasn't even started yet. So, what are we gonna do? Another thing we need to do is find the elephants. I have to find the elephants today. If they come back our way. What happens? But not only that, it's like somebody found those lions first thing in the morning. So instead of guys, I mean, there are now six or seven vehicles. Obviously, a lot more guests came in yesterday because yesterday there were only three vehicles driving around the whole reserve. Well, the southern part of the reserve. Well, it just so happened that there weren't any major sightings yesterday, except for our elephant that we found, and we had to leave that off for a minute because 
suddenly there were other, vehicles, the other two vehicles with right on top of us. But instead of going out for a drive and acknowledging the fact that yes, okay, line are on a kill, the guy was saying, I'm putting on standby. So they go there and they sit at a junction a few hundred yards away and they wait for their turn. Instead of going for a drive, letting it flow naturally. That's what you're going to miss out. But they're on a giraffe still, they're going to be there until tomorrow. But at least Becky will get somehow get in there. Get put it. Becky went up to Royal Malawan, she's on one of their vehicles, evidently. Look at those mountains. That is beautiful. Scarlet batting on Rolf Rogue. Which means they're way, way up in the north. Channel 6, and it's up in the northern section of Thornybush, where 
the Dave Grant channel is channel 6. And very far away. Quite I think we could do if this cat's walking around, just drive around and see if he's going to walk on top of our tracks and maybe we'll catch her on the road. Straight up here on this, right on the edge of the road, and then just. So she must have maybe darted into the bush or something. Yeah. But she didn't do it. Like she did it that time. There's a toe, but now I'm getting too close to where her tracks were anyway, so it's not going to help. Bent into the 
cold thermocline of the riverbed. Well, there's still that one elephant bull hanging out there near Langwan Dam, or maybe he's not there anymore, but we'll go that way and see what we can find. Young lioness that was moving about. Yeah. Trying to think, where did we see that lioness track last time? The youngster was just across. around the pads and hammer cook loop and then come back to the river. Well that not very promising because there's no sign of that leopard coming out onto this road. So maybe she went down river and then crossed Going around that way. That's kind of the, yeah. Wonder if these warthogs are out of their burrow yet. Probably not. It's probably chilly. Here, right? Termite line straight up ahead. Maybe that's good sleep. Morning, piggies. Nobody home. What's that? Because I'm expecting it. It's the thing about nature, you can't expect things. <coughs> when you expect something, it doesn't happen. The law of wildlife viewing, finding animals, the more you expect to see something, the less chance there is of finding it. We never expect an impala. Look, there's impala. Quite a big hyena at that. Okay. Oh, 
morning, Cathy. Not sure where Cathy is from. Cathy wants to know, we track the female lion or female leopard. At the moment, I'm not tracking either, Cathy. I'm looking for tracks. I had tracks of the, of the leopard near camp, but I haven't been able to pick up any further tracks. It means she's off the road somewhere in the bush near, near where I, probably where I found her tracks. And with this kind of bush, there's nothing you can do. Cat leaves the road. So unless we see her from the road, there's not much we can do about it. hard to get in off the road off the road. And this a lot of these spots. So at the moment I'm just looking at whatever track I can find. At the moment now I've got some zebra tracks that are going that way. There's a big hyena that came this way during the night. Zebra looks like they must have gone this way to go and head water at this water hole that is here. But not, haven't seen any sign of lions this morning. So we've got a lot of ground to cover in the next couple of hours. <laughs> and rather than spending too much time on not knowing where this leopard is, maybe trying to guess what a cat's going to do. Try and cover some ground and see what tracks we can pick up. I do want to get further north, northwest. Hyena was, hyena was lying in the road here. Make another loop past camp. Oh, there's the male leopard track now. It's come out of the bush. And he's on this road. This is probably her young male.
I hope it doesn't go anywhere further west from where he is now because then we don't have signal. And
those uh, frozen. And if you pity because that is really an incredible with this steam and the dust. back in signal range. Answer, I think it was Jennifer's question about can animals see colour? Oh, there's a huge debate about that. Well this is I don't know about that. Here, this is the here's the female leopard coming down here now. So she we put the head across the river. There's no way of knowing. The thing is that up until a while ago it was believed that, you know, see here's this leopard with her cubs coming down from there, heading down. So they're down there somewhere, or they've crossed the river, and they've possibly got a kill. Um, yeah, a lot of leopard tracks now, with the female and her young. Anyway, okay, so it was believed that you needed rods and cones to see colour and a lot of animals only have rods, they don't have the cones that split up the light into the different colour spectrum. Then of course they do these experiments using colourful things and then they determine, oh well then dogs can see colour. I don't know, I might be wrong about this. But basically they say, okay, well because the dog kept choosing the red ball or whatever it is, then ergo they must see colour. But what they don't realise is that it's not a black and white that these that, that animals that are that, that have monochrome vision, if it is the case, then it's monochrome. It's like turning the colour off on your T V set. You can still see different shades and a, an animal will be able to different differentiate between different shades of different greys because it becomes so important in this world to be able to do so. The other thing is, on the argument on the other side for animals seeing colour, is why would some creatures, like snakes, insects, spiders, lizards, uh, birds, no, maybe not birds, some agree birds, so why would snakes and lizards and, and, and insects and spiders, why would they be cryptically coloured? Coloured with the Good morning. Um, on that cut line near my camp. Ah, negative. No, I haven't crossed the river yet. Well, maybe that's that my daughter over the two foot dam the other day. I've got some big way. Well, this is my father with my pimp and that other young my daughter. Uh, more or less heading west from Palmacorp Loop. I can't follow them going through that. They might be going through that crossing. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to go around and see if they come out on uh, Bushwilla or Monkey Thorn. That's right, so when we came back last night, we had an ingwin down here next to River Lodge. So, different lapis, maybe? I don't know. So, why would, you know, there are animals that have what we call opposomatic colouring. A combination of red, yellow, white, black orange. Warning colours. Why would creatures have warning colours if their predator could only see in black and white? This is an argument for animals seeing colour. The one thing that I can tell you for definite 
without without a shadow of a doubt that the animals that have color see color because the color is used in, in territorial and especially in breeding rituals so fish birds lizards snakes primates all have color and they react quite strongly to the colors that, that they're associated with. In other words, red for primates is a sign of fertility. Why the, prim- the, the behinds of some primates get big and fishy and red when the females are in Eastern. Five to the males. But, um, fish, obviously, the males are the brightest colors. And with birds, the males are the brightest colors. Those are the ones they have developed those colors in response to their environment as, as well as in response to uh, genetic modification so that they can outshine their rival males and the brightest are the ones that, that get to breed. Of course, there is this, this um, what do we call it, paradox. The colors have to be bright enough to attract females, but they can't be so bright that they're going to make you stand out against your background and become prey. So when it comes to the question of whether animals see color or not, it's all very well. We can dissect the eye and we can establish what the eye, what the, the makeup of the eye, whether they rods with cones, with how the eyes see, and the piece of lucidum, that layer of light cells behind the eye, and all sorts of things. But unless an animal can tell you that something is green, I still, I don't, for me, the jury dies. I really don't know. I want to know if the tests that they do to determine whether animals see color are. are representative of that animal seeing color or just seeing different shades and being able to react to different shades of grey. As one does see. No, oh, well insects, that's what I said. Yeah, well they do. Not only butterflies, but all insects. Insects see in ultraviolet, so do birds. Um, Okay, copy. Um, yeah, I'm about to cross the river now, but close to, uh, they're crossing close to I'll be the pan. Yeah, affirmative. That road, uh, he came past, that male came past Hamakop Pan, uh, on, or the pan on Hamakop Loop. She came down with cubs from those water tanks down towards that road that eventually crosses the full in on that on the, the western side. Yeah, I had to turn around still on the southern side of the river, I had to turn around there, so I'm back in the east now.
No, no, they fall under the animals that have color so that they see color. It's, it's things like the herbivores and the predators that don't have color. They have camouflage. Uh, uh, 
weer hou je het nog met de vele Big duurver. Email push but across the river. Maybe there's a gap. that she looks very similar to Nyala. She's the same family. And Nyala, so she looks like a little bit forward. She's looking at us now. So many more, more bush buttons. I think they're finding it hard to compete with the with the Nyala now. They're hidden again. Dedication. Okay. a termite mine. Obviously dead wood is everywhere, including the dead roots of trees. Um, but initially, in the summer months after a very particular thunderstorm, when the Pinnacle Mountain termites release their reproductive case, they're, they're the flying termites, their winged reproductive, they fly off and they burrow wherever they let, where, when a ma male and a female hook up together after they've dropped their wings. They burrow underground and they start a mound where they are. It doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be at a fallen tree. Because trees, excuse me, I've got it. The fallen trees and dead wood that you find lying around is actually. 
but other termites, other species of termites that don't build cars. Some of it is eaten by the clinical mouth termites, and some of it is eaten by the black mouth termites. and the snout is too much. something I've never seen before. Or maybe something you've never seen before. That might be a bit here.
nobody to follow them anymore. We can't follow them. So once again, we've got to live. After going that way to Austin, the other way. The Rosen. Always heads our way.
and this, if this is a they're approaching patrol and they're down in the drainage line, they've been nice there, but they don't have to go What is the difference between an antelope, a gazelle, and an impala? Well, that comes from Marco. Morning, Marco. Well, an impala is an antelope, so there's no difference between an antelope and an impala. Antelope is a general term for all the antelope. Gazelles are kind of separate from the antelope, I suppose, in a what type of antelope. The gazelles have a couple of specific features that, that make them different to Impala. That open plains game and because of that female gazelles have horns. Whereas female antelope most female antelope most don't have horns. Some do. Um, specific differences, I mean or scientific I don't know really Marco. It's gazelles are gazelles, antelope are antelope. Differences are in some of their makeup, some of their Gazelles generally, you know, yes, now who would be walking there because I'm the only one that's bent. Maybe it was me. Did I find something here? What's up? Maybe it's loud.
electric bus. What did I find the other day? I don't know. It must be a flower. Or flower or an insect or something. in afternoon drive because I'm not normally yeah, okay. drive my slippers on in the morning. Maybe more... Wait, I don't know where the mantle is. I'm trying to see what there is here. Um, there was something here. That's now in Zenonia. I don't know. Anyway. Baby. 
hell of a seat hole running out. Can you get us through that yet? Back. I saw her, she was at Long, long, long One Dam, she ran away from us, look at her, she's actually coming out for us. She's a pretty girl. I think that's what the most beautiful little oh, baby. Wow. Okay. And stop and look at us. Okay. Her baby's going to run now. Gorgeous little thing, very furry. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't seen her in that yet. It's a little unusual to have a waterbuck alone when it's a car. Uh, yeah, they didn't like that noise. <laughs> Gareth was talking about can't be the same male. And it didn't come out like this. It didn't have a chest for the down or something. We need to go. So sure. Gareth is uh, probably up at the lion. Gareth coming? that water bus is coming up this way. Maybe we need to turn around a little bit. Um, but he was saying that he saw the tracks there, so this could be... We are at the back of the tracks, and he had them further up.
9 minutes.
quite close to Langwine Dam right now. Northwest of it.
about that. Aaron was just saying that there was an email that looks like it came from Dee Dee, but the email address was from Rose. Regarding a viewer, an old time viewer, long time viewer, should I say, who passed away last night. And I don't know who that person is, that was the viewer that passed away. It was a grandmother, perhaps Dee Dee's grandmother? I'm not placing the name, so. Well, I'm not too sure, but it just that it was saying that I'm very sorry to hear that. We send our condolences, condolences from all of us at Wild Earth. Kind of left me with quite a heavy heart. Because no doubt I'll know who that was then, because for a long time we were at Wild Earth. From the super drives and now with these drives, then I must know who it is. But I don't think any name was mentioned. Yesterday was like a mirror. Another 
Drongo. Must be Drongo the chasing Liverpool away. Nobody is here today. Guard from the start, come back from the north. 